Hello students, in this video we're going to look at how we can use these formulas that we derived in the previous video to determine the total resistance in a circuit or the equivalent resistance. So we derived these formulas in the previous video so I hope you guys, um, if you want to see how they are derived so you can look at that video. But in this video we're just going to see how we can use these formulas to determine the equivalent or total resistance. So we're going to look at two examples here. In the first example, we're just trying to see how we actually determine the effective resistance or the total resistance. In the second video, or in the second example, I mean, we'll now try to combine the idea of equivalent resistance with uh, Ohm's law to determine the current at any point in a circuit. Now, let's go right ahead and look at our first example. In this example, we want to determine the equivalent resistance of the circuit. To do that, we're going to do this in two steps. The first part, we're going to look at just these two resistors. We quickly observe that these two resistors are connected parallel to one another. Because they are parallel to one another, to find the combined resistance of these two, we're going to say the combined resistance because of those two is going to be equal to 1 over the first resistor plus 1 over the second resistor. So here we're dealing with the 500 and the 400 resistor. So this is how we'll get their combined resistance. So of course, this quickly becomes 1 over the total of those two equal to 700 plus 500 divided by the product of 500 and 700. From here, we see that the combined resistance because of those two is going to just be 500 by 700 divided by 700 plus 500. If we do the math here, we're going to get the resistance as 292 ohms to three significant figures. So what this implies is that these two resistors here are as good as just putting a 292 uh, ohm resistor in place of those two. So that is what combining resistors implies. So we can redraw our circuit such that now we are only seeing so now we are only seeing the first resistor here but in place of the second resistor we're now in the other two resistors we're now only going to see a combination of those two this is point A this is point B so instead of having two resistors here now we are only seeing a combination of those two resistors. So this is now a combination of those two. So the first resistor was 400 ohms. The other two combined, they give us 292 ohms. So this was 400 ohms. So now we have obtained the combined resistor of the four, of the 500 ohms and the 700 ohm resistor. So lastly, we then combine these two. So if we look at these two, we see that these are in series. We're seeing one line there. So they are in series uh, to one another. So because they're forming a series connection, getting their combined resistance becomes easy. Just add them. So the 400 plus the 292 ohms. So if we do the math here, what we get the combined resistance here becomes 691, 92 ohms. So this becomes the combined resistance. So in the end, we can redraw our circuit. If this is point A and this is point B, we can redraw it such that in our, in our circuit or in our connection, we're only seeing one resistor. And this resistor is the effective resistor. Or the total resistance and this is 9692 ohms so the 692 ohms represents all the three resistors which were present in our circuit so if we had a power source here the power source would be viewing those three resistors as only the combination of them so it more like sees them as a, as a combined unit so which is 692 ohms altogether so this is how we determine the 
um, the equivalent resistor of a number of uh, uh, resistors in a circuit. So we'll look at a few more examples, but this is how we determine it or how we do it for this example. In this example, we have now introduced a power source and the goal will be to try to predict the current at any point um, in our circuit. So we'll still be using the ideas of equivalent resistance, but then how do we combine those with other quantities like current and so on in our circuit? So to do that, we are going to again start with the same method of determining first equivalent resistance. The question is asking us to find two things. In the first part, we have to find the current that is being drawn from our battery. So we want to find the current that is coming, let's say, in, in this way. And then after that, we want to find the current that is passing through the 6 ohm resistor. So just the current that is going down in this route, because that's the current that is going towards our 6 ohm resistor. So how do we do that? Well, to achieve our goal, what we do first is, we're first going to start by just focusing on these two resistors. So we'll try to get the combined resistance of those two. So because those two are in parallel to each other, we're going to say their combined resistance. I'm going to say our total. This is the first one, so I'll label it as one. So this is going to be one over the first resistor plus one over the second resistor. So this becomes one. 4 I mean plus 4 over 16 so this is 1 over the first equivalent resistor or total resistance equal to this is going to be 8 over 16 which is equal to 1 over 2 so that the first total resistance will just be equal to 2 ohms so we can redraw this circuit so that where we had the 4 and the 4 ohm resistors in parallel we can substitute with their combined resistance so instead now we only have one resistor here and this resistor is two ohms so this is the combined resistance of those two resistors next up we can then look at these two these two are now in series so because they're in series, we can just add them up. We know to say resistors in series, so that this is the second total. So those are just going to add up. So the six plus the two, so we get eight ohms. So if we were to redraw our circuit, we're now seeing eight ohms on top. And then, of course we go down here we'll have a resistor then here again another resistor and then our power source but down here where we had that connection with lots of resistors we are now replacing this with only the equivalent resistance of those three which has been found to be eight ohms so here this blue line this is this line here so we have combined those three resistors to just get eight ohms next up we then realize that these two are parallel to each other because they are parallel to each other to combine them so let me just fill in the values for the other resistor this is one ohm 3 ohm and 12 watts. So we have 1 ohm, 3 ohm, and 12 watts. So we can combine the eight, the two 8 ohm resistors which are parallel to each other. Again, we have 1 over. This is the third total, so I'll have it like this. So this would be equal to 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8 again. So that in the end, we have common denominator, 8, and in the numerator, we get 1 plus 1. And this comes to give us 2 over 8 or 1 over 4. So from here, we can calculate the total resistance. Number 3, of course. 
since it is 1 over 4, when you take the reciprocal, we get our T3 equal to 4 ohms. With this figured out, what this then implies is that if we look at our setup, our circuit now becomes the connection which was on top now has been combined to just give us this 4 ohm resistor. And then this side, we had that 3 ohm resistor. And then coming down, we had the 1 ohm resistor and the power source was this side. So this part, this is where we had that connection for the 8 ohm resistor and um, the, other, the other three resistors which were connected the other side. So all those have been combined. So I mean these ones here. So these resistors here, let me highlight them with a different color. So these resistors here have been combined to give us that 4 ohm that 4 ohm resistor. So we have 4 ohm resistor, there are 3 ohms here, 1 ohm here, and then 12 ohms from the power source. Okay, so let's put in the other values. So here this is 1 ohm, and then this is 12 volts from the power source. So now we want to calculate the current coming from the power source, but before we do that, we can get the total resistance in our circuit. So when we look at the other three resistors now, the way they are, what we see is that this 4 ohm resistor, the 3 ohm resistor, and the 1 ohm resistor, now they are in series with one another. So because they are in series, we can get the overall total resistance in our circuit as a sum. Since these are in series, we only have 1 ohm plus 3 ohms plus that 4 ohms. So in the end, the total resistance altogether in our circuit comes out to be 8 ohms. So our circuit, in other words, just comes to look like as if we only have one resistor and this resistor, the total resistance, is 8 ohms. So this is what the power source sees. The power source just sees a combined thing of 8 ohms altogether. So when current comes from the source, the current that is going to be released will just be responding to that uh, that resistance. So in other words, from Ohm's law, we have the voltage from the source has to be equal to the current in the line multiplying the resistance. But this is the total resistance that we're using here. So the voltage from the source, this is 12 volts. So we have 12 volts equal to the current which we are looking for from the source, multiplying the resistance, the total resistance in that circuit, which is 8 ohms. So we can calculate I here as 12 over 8, and this comes out as 1.5 amps. So 1.5 amps worth of current to be drawn from the power source, seeing that the total resistance in that circuit reduced to just 8 ohms. So with that figured out, we then want to um, determine the current that comes to pass through the, uh, the 6 ohm resistor. Okay, now we have just seen that the current coming from the source, the current coming from here, going in this direction, is just 1.5 amps. So again, it's coming from our battery or power source, so as it is coming in this direction, it is just 1.5 ohms. So since this is the same line, the same current passes through the 1 ohm resistor. So it continues coming in this direction. It continues coming in our line until when it reaches this junction. But at this junction now, what happens is that the current splits. Part of it goes up in this direction as, let's say, I1. Then part of it goes down in this direction. And let's say this is I2. Two. Now, what determines the, the amount that goes up or the amount that goes down is the resistance in that line. Current tends to go 
uh, more current will tend to go in a route which has um, less resistance. So current tends to flow more uh, in a route where there's, uh, there's less resistance as compared to a route where there is, there is more resistance. So in most cases, to determine the amount of current in a line, we use the current divider rule. But in this case, of course, we won't even have to go that far. We will just take a shortcut. But what determines what the value of I2? Because I2 is the current that comes to pass through this 6 ohm resistor. But to determine what I2 is, it's going to be determined by the resistance, the total resistance in this line compared to the total resistance in the other line, of course. So based on the previous calculations, we already found the combination of these three resistors and we drew a circuit that resulted from there. And it looked like this. So from here, what we're saying is coming this side, we sought to say that we have 1.5 amps. Now we're trying to find the current that goes to this line. That's the current that will pass through that 6 ohm resistor. So this current, of course, since the resistors are the same either, uh, either side, uh, the resistance is the same in each line. So what we see is that this 1.5 is going to split. Part of it will go up, part of it will go down. And since the resistors are the same, it's going to split in equal proportions. In other words, half will go up, 0 0.75, and half will go down, 0 0.75. So in other words, the current that will pass through the 6 ohm resistor will be 0 0.75 ohms. So it passes through the 6 ohm resistor, it continues. So if we use this diagram, so that current, it passes through, so 0 0.75 passes through this. After it passes through the 6 ohm resistor, again it reaches this junction here. Again, we are seeing a branching behavior. So it's going to split again. Part will go up and part will go down. So after that, it comes back here. It recombines here so that again, it forms that 1.5 ohms. Again, continues going this side. When it reaches this point, it then meets the 0 0.75 that went up. And then now they'll meet at this junction again. They'll add up so that as it continues going this side, we'll have 1.5 amps again. So the 1.5 amps will pass through this line. And as it comes back to the source, it comes back again as 1.5 ohms. So this is how we determine the current passing through that 6 ohm resistor. Okay, so I hope you guys found this helpful. Let me know what um, comments are in the, in the comment section. So if you've got a question that you'd want me to, to look at, or if you want more questions on in this topic, just let me know in the comment section, or you can forward the questions to, to my email. Now, right, guys, see you in the next video.